Mensa, Judge May Mensa Akakwa, and Judge Michael Nikwe. In the center of all of the action is Ju referee Shadrach Akwe. Shake hands and good luck to both of you.
Work. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe his lifestyle, he's got a flashy lifestyle and wants, you know, to emulate the pretty boy, you know, who, you know, finished boxing undefeated. In him, in the blue and black, he's undefeated in 13 fights. It's been 13 straight victories. And his opponent. You know, fighting in the black and gold trunk from the Atokwashi Boxing Gym. Also has got 12, you know, they professional no fights. Punches. This is the super middleweight division where punches are unleashed. They have to unleash punches. You know, this run has lagged activity. You know, nothing really happening. You know, no decent punches. You know, they just came in, you know, to warm up. That's all. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's, what we, it's what we call steady. They are, they are, they are steady in each other, steady boxing uh, with lack of intensity, lack of activity. I hope they have come the second round, we'll see, we'll, we'll see more activity from both boxes. But the first, the first round has been a bit boring. You know, let's see how it goes. And Mate has been spoken to by his trainer, Osman Brew. I've not seen any Mayweather likeness in him. Mayweather is a, is a boxer that fights with excitement and thrilling and, and releases punches very quick. You know, he does pinpoint, pinpoint accurate punches, land descent punches, of excellent footwork, tremendous hand speed, even though the hand speed cannot match that of the man himself. The fastest man with the hand speed is Manny Pacquiao. So we are in for round two of this Commodore Eliminator and also a national super middleweight contest. In him, in the blue and black, attacking straight. You know, but he slowed down and that was a good right, you know, from Imano Mate. Uh, that was quick, quick reply. And in him is still trying to attack you know, with uh, the job. Mate connecting with the right. Missed targets, and we're seeing it all round. And Nim seems to be scared, I mean, releasing punches. You know, I think at, at this point, both boxers, fair to say that they're so much interested about um, their records. They want to end without, you know, a defeat. But these are boxers that are preparing for come off title. You know, you know, you be thinking of, you know, if you get opportunity of fighting George Drews as a super middleweight, how are you going to adjust? A division full of, you know, crack boxers. You need to be very, very ferocious and also attack minded. And it, you can see they are off, you know, focus on what will happen to their faces everybody wants to protect and come out as a uh, as a good boy you know pretty boy you know, but you can't get this in the middleweight division punches are flying everywhere well i saw imano mati came up with some one or two jabs you know the, the referee stopped the fight because of um, the lights You know, so let's see how they'll pick it up from there. It's Enim, you know, attacking down, operating and allowing his jabs, you know, to go, but still lacking accuracy. Amate tries to attack, 
but it was a soft one to the chest of Enim. Enim attacks and then he backtracks. But this time around, he goes forward with a straight right. You know, good overhead punch from Mate. He goes in again, but then he couldn't find you know, the target point. Ooh, what was that? You well, know, he was shadow boxing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but in him goes the super in middleweight strongly. division, you don't do that. You need to be hitting, you need to be hitting your opponent with landing punches. And the punches should be devastating. I mean, it should have an effect on the opponent. So far, I've not seen that. But uh, Mate really have shown some uh, level. You know, enough in the ring. You know, they get to display, you know, raw super middleweight, you know, stuff. So the punches are not landing. They are not working on the body. You know, they are concentrated on shadow boxing and studying opponents. They need to take risks. That's what they have. They must do. Take the risk. Go forward. You know, and try to see if you can get your opponent. Both boxers are not. They are not taking risk. They have not shown courage. You understand? And in boxing, you need to be courageous. You need to take risk. Calculated risk, yes. But you need to take risk. You need to be courageous. Yeah, they don't want to be hit as well. You know, give something away. You know, before you can, you know, make some strides in this um, division. But that's not what we're seeing. Two undefeated boxers fighting in this Commonwealth Eliminator. And also... Uh, this bout will serve as a national super middleweight contest. In him, you know, first attack, and then there was a reply from Emmanuel Mate. Mate now attacking, you know, to the body. And Enim adjusts and tries to fight now and goes in, you know, strongly and. Oh. No, it's wrong. The name is pushing him. That was pushing. That is why the referee is warning him. He's not supposed to push him. Uh, him straight. We'll try to attack. And Martin now, you know, trying to box, but still not able to land those punches correctly. Yeah, the problem with Mate is that he is attack he's attacking aggressively, but he's not landing the power shot decently. That is the problem that Mada, but in terms of his ability to move forward and attack, a name is good, but after doing that, the most important thing he need to do is to land the punches. But unfortunately, that is not being done by Enim. You know, that was a wild miss there from Enim, but Mate couldn't take advantage, you know, to counter. And it's Enim now, he goes straight, but Mate was unhurt. I don't think he felt it. Any name will try to fight and connect upstairs, but the referee will break them up. Any name is not jabbing. All he's waiting for is that killer punch. And in boxing, it doesn't happen like that. You need to work on the body of your opponent. You need to create the opening of your jab before. Don't wait for it. A knockout. I mean, the knockout does not can you work for the knockout? Yes, there are situations where your opponent can walk into a punch. Absolutely. Let's see the last 30 seconds of this, you know, round. Mate trying to go forward and with his jabs. You know, we, we, we've seen very, very little of boxing today. It is more talking of about Charles. Are you talking about? <laughs>
at the international stage where yeah. we've got quality boxes yeah. available and have delivered. If we don't match up to that level, you know, I'm afraid we have to consider another profession. But you see, the point is that our boxers are preparing to, they are using the stage as an opportunity and a platform to prepare themselves, correct their mistakes, improve, have opportunity to fight at African titles, come off title before they prepare for the world title. So they need to be getting these things right here. Round four, about to start. And we're watching, you know, very dull. What is the name doing? This is know, no super middleweight contest. This is no wrestling, the name. That is boxing. He has no business going to tie the leg of Ivan Omati. Uh, the second time we've seen this in this yes. um, super middleweight contest. In, in, in the black and blue, Mate in the black and gold. Both boxes undefeated. And this is the Zen Petroleum Come on, Eliminator. And also a national super middleweight contest. Oh. Those punches never landed. Wouldn't be counted as clean punches at all from a name. And Martin now is attacking. Anim is Anim seem more aggressive, steady, and have good defense. But the problem is that he is not landing decent punches. That would have been an excellent asset to what he has exhibited so far. Anim now fighting, but Mati connects. In him now trying to, you know, he's just sizing and doing more shadow boxing, you know, Jeff. Likewise, Marte, he must attack and throw the punches. Let your jab go. You know, release the jabs. It was a weak hook, another weak one. That and the body the expression point. there from in him tells it all. He says, I was never hurt. Martin now coming forward, stepping forward with a right jab. And Enim also doing the same. But this time connects with the right upstairs. He goes in again. You know, but uh, couldn't find you know the target areas. You know, so far it's just been about shadow boxing. You know, footwork. You know, throwing weaker punches. You know, padding and they're not, you know, causing any harm at all. Not hurting the opponent. The two boxers have got a similar fighting tactic. None of them has thrown any devastating punch so far. You know, we need those ferocious one. That was a good one there from Mate. That was a good set, one. More of set punches. Absolutely. But Enim tries to, you know, come in with um, the right. And that's the end of round four. A good round. So I'm, expe I'm expecting power punches. I'm expecting aggression. I'm expecting physical contest. I'm expecting close fights. That, that's what happens at the Super Middleweight Division. Close fight. Very close. Yo, Difficult to differentiate until either there's a knockout or the boxers are able to go through the entire duration of the of the shadow round. So that is what is um, that is what is lacking. I'm not seeing them jab each other. Um, they are not creating openings. Ready for round. In the blue and black, you know, fighting undefeated. 
Emmanuel Mate. Yes, again, in Mate, the black and Mate gold. deciding to. Yes, he, I, I, this is the third time. And he's been spoken to by the ref. Let's see if this run will be different. Mate jabbing with the right. And him now try to also, you know, jab his way. But the jabs are not connecting. They are not connecting. You, you, you're not getting those, you know, jabs landing at all. That is what is making it difficult for both sets to be able to create the necessary dead opening and land those powerful punches. Mate down, trying to do his own thing. But still not eye catching. And the combinations, you know, good one there from Mate. And he connects again. This time around going downstairs and goes into the body. Yes, I need those body, you know, punches. That's what we're waiting for. You know, but they should be ferocious. In him, in the wild punches, couldn't find or catch him at all. Good one there from Mate with a job. This time around, releasing the right. The essence of body shot is not for easy. It's two things. One, the body shot is supposed to weaken your opponent. And secondly, it's supposed to force him to drop the, the, guard. the defense, the guard, so that to create opening for it. So if the, if the, if the body shot is of no effect, or it doesn't make an impact on your opponent, I'm sorry. We need more of, you know, such body, you know, shots from the two boxes. No major highlights, you know, to talk about. It's like a sparring, you know, we see even see more from a sparring exercise than this. Oh, yeah, definitely. More activity, you know, but this is just not good enough. And him now trying to connect, he goes straight up, uppercut miss, and then he clinches Marty. So we just 20 seconds left in this fifth round. And him is and trying, just to, take trying to fight his and way. He's trying to take risk now. He's taking the fight to Ivano Marty. You know, but still, he's not done anything with talking about in the last that's still not my coach that's still not You know, we've done five, seven more to go. You know, but these two boxes must do more to convince us. And that's uh, Ben, you know, talking to his boxer, Iman and Enim. I hope that I will see more intensity, aggression, power punches in this particular round from these two boxes. So halfway stage of this 12th round contest in the Commodore Eliminator and also the National Super Middleweight contest. Martin now going forward, but. You know, he's been halted by that clinch um, came in from Inim. Inim went straight to clinch him, to tie him up. Mate now, working on the body now, goes upstairs, but couldn't connect. And it's still Mate trying to attack. And you can see that now Inim is stationary and he's not moving around. Yes, the, the, the reason is because he, he have realized that if 
he can stand toe to toe and fight Imanamati. Initially, I think he was giving too much respect, but with the few uh, aggressive, aggressive attacks that is exhibited in the previous round, it has given him hope that he can do that. And so far, um, he's, he's doing quite well. You realize that Mate, at the latter stage of last round, and this round, at the early stage of this round, is really struggling because the name is now attacking him. A name is not the aggressor as compared to previous rounds where Mate was the aggressor. The only challenge is that a name is not landing powerful punches, he's not working on Mate's body because this is the time that he needs to take advantage of his aggression to actually work on Mate's body and find out how strong Mate's defense is. I think on a few occasions, Mate has also you know, tried to work on a rib cage of Enim. And the two boxers will tie up. He drops the right. You know, but then to the gloves of uh, Mate. Mate now going for it. And it's still Mate now attacking. Not connecting. That was a slip. And that was a slip. Spotted there by the ref. You know, the corner of Martin not pleased at all. They thought it was a decent punch. That sent in him to the canvas. The the, and the, the trainers in the corner are showing absolute. They are, they are being disrespectful to the referee. Uh, absolutely, um, and the referee... They are, they are not supposed to argue with the decision of the referee. You know, the powers of the referee, he, he's got, you know, the right to walk you out, just like in football. You can be sent to the stands, and just like, you know, football, he can also take control. That's uh, Martin now, trying to connect, goes downstairs now. And him will fight back, but it's still Martin with some combinations. They are landing. He goes in for the uppercut, he's been blocked. You know, still not, not heavy enough. The punches, you know, to cause damage. But Enim will fight back with an overhead shot with the right and then drop the right. You know, at his side, the end of round six. I think we've seen some. The instruction that was being issued by his, his trainers from his corner, and so he ended. He ended with some level of ferocity. But coming back into this particular rounds, round seven, is an opportunity for me to see whether a name, what a name started, whether he can be consistent, whether he will be, he will be continuously attacking aggressively. What he has started doing in round five and round six, and how Imanomate will respond to that. So interesting time when it comes to this particular round round seven let's see how the two boxers will fare now that we have seen what the two of them have shown so far in terms of their level of aggressiveness and also they've shown some level of intensity in the last round the latter stage of last round round seven underway in this come out eliminator and also national super middleweight context two undefeated boxers emmanuel enim in the blue and black against Imano Mate in the black and gold. Mate now. A and low I think blow. he's complaining. There was a low blow. <laughs> and the referee is trying to tell him that was a punch. Just on the belt, you know, in line. No point deducted from his build up. That was a warning. And him, he must attack now. Remember Felix Trinidad, Ferocious Vargas? On numerous occasions, Felix Trinidad hit Vargas below the belt. You know, but below the belly. I think at a point in time, the, the, the record of a, a dirty boxer was for a long time, it belonged to Bernard Hopkins. You know? Yeah, I mean, he's the, he's the most dirtiest boxer, but at the end of the day, hey. He's no, no, no. He's crafty. <laughs> you know, so Whitaker is crafty. very crafty. 
but but as the Krishna the executioner can headbutt you without you seeing the referee knowing that he has headbutted. He's yeah, very dirty. Especially when he fought, you know, Jermaine Taylor. You know, that was about, right? Jermaine Taylor, one and two, yes. all going the way up from the young, you know, chap. And the, now it, you know, the it bad ended the long, Taylor. It ended the long reign of Bernard Hopkins as a heavy a middleweight king. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, Chad Dawson. Bernard Hopkins, Chad Dawson. Oh. Whoa, what a fight. You remember Adrian, Adrian, Adrian Diacone? <laughs> you know, we've seen bouts in the past, and yeah. hey, let's not kid ourselves. There's still more work to be done by, you know, boxers who want to aspire to get to that level. We, we've got less than a minute in this round where the competition has been just roughing. <laughs> What does he want to ask? Try to get to that level. Then I'll take it up. Let's know. Want to ask? Try to get to that level. Well, then let's take this to the top. Let's talk about it. And decently, and you realize that the the opponent will feel the impact of the punch. But so far, you know, the last that. 20 seconds of the seven, we are into the last. 20 seconds and let's see wow martin out to the rope you know that was a good one upstairs by enim he's trying to end this round on a good note you know that's it he did well you know by connecting when we all thought that martin had come in and that's the end of round seven and name is gradually warming himself into he's trying to get his he's not been able to get into his rhythm you know, yet, let's watch you know this from Marte, he connected, and then there was a reply from any Both boxers are throwing some wild punches. You know, can't wait for the main bout of the evening coming up just after this fight. And that's Emmanuel Enim and his cornerman, Coach Safo, trying to work on him. And this Imano Mate also undefeated. This channel, Smarty Brew, working on him as well. A lot of talk in the corner. You know, I don't think the cornerman will be pleased with what. They are not. They are telling him that he need to know that. Look, you need to jab. You need to. What the sign, the gesture shown by the trainer. Um, Imano Mate's trainer has to do with two things jabbing consistently and uppercuts on opportunity come. But so far, he's not exhibited that. Round eight of the 12. We're still expecting more from the two super middleweight boxes. Nothing really to, you know, to write him about. And Enim had, you know, caught Mate in his armpit. Martin now going in with a jab. You know, that was that was like a, you know a tap. And him leading with his left this time round decided to go in for the overhead right. And Mate attempting to connect with this, you know, right upper cut but then it didn't happen and in him now goes in straight with the right again and the two boxes making it difficult for themselves you know, I, I don't think we've enjoyed this bout at all well it's very difficult i mean these are boxes that are fighting at the super middleweight division you expect that they exhibit Top quality boxing, at least excellent technique, skill, punching power. You know, we've not seen any of this, what you this, mentioned. In, and this is a this. super middleweight division, so uh, it's interesting. A lot of work to be done on the two boxes. There's a lot of work, a lot of work to be done by the trainers and the boxers themselves. Their discipline, their discipline is key. The ability to learn, and and then also how to meet the the technical requirements of a, a super middleweight boxer is very important. If you're a boxer and you want to fight in a particular division, you need to know the technical requirement and you work towards that. 
Well, so far they've done well at 168. You know, they came in 166, 167. You know, good for the two boxers making a weight. You know, but it's the boxing artistry that we've got a lot of that reservations critical, about. That is the critical one. That's the most important. Uh, the discipline was there, you know, but, you know, we want to see more. Martin now trying to go in. You know, but then there's a quick reply there from Enim once again. He is roughing his man. Still not, you know, landing those clean punches, Jeff. No, we are not seeing, you see, as a super middleweight, when, when you land a punch, your opponent should feel it. I mean, they should make an impact. There, there, there should be a movement, I mean, of the person to see that, look, the punch has made an impact. We have not seen that. And this is the super middleweight division. From super middleweight to light heavyweight to cruiserweight, that is what we expect to be seeing. Heavy into punches. the heavyweight division. Heavy punches, steel jabs. That's the end of round eight of the 12. Very, very close to call. I mean, uh, between these two boxes, it's difficult to choose who is really leading on the scorecards of the judges. You know, I didn't, <laughs> you know, give myself that headache by trying to score, you know, at ringside. I leave it to the judges to do that. Sapu and the Konaman, very, very harsh on Emmanuel Eni. at this level I need to be releasing punches you need to have every you need to know the number of punches you need to land per round it's very very important the, the two boxers have got three rounds you know to shame all of us you know what is the essence of a speedball yeah, it's very important that if you have a speedball in, in your gym it has a significance so if you are not releasing your your, your, your jobs very well then hey do you have a speedball at at your gym what? Huge questions about you know these boxes, but let's see how it goes. Wild punches being thrown here and there, and Enim now being aggressive going forward with a left overhead. Mate now in the black and gold trying to attack and come back after being attacked by Enim. Enim now has got Mate against the rope and still can't take advantage. No, both, both boxers, it's difficult, it is difficult to, to actually pinpoint what really this, they really want in this particular bout. Because this is a, a national title and a super middleweight on at a stake as well as, as, well as the, is a Commonwealth eliminator. So you need to exhibit the best the best performance that you have never you have never ex exhibited before it also helps your trainers to know oh that was a good one and mate's days
Get off box. And we're getting ready for the 10th round. And that's in him in his corner. And what can they offer? They look tired on the stool. And Mate and his corner men also. <laughs> you know, I don't think they have anything new to offer after 10 rounds. Well, maybe, I don't think maybe so. they might surprise us. Uh, let's see. You know, round 10 of the 12. Uh, this is a national super middleweight contest. Also, a Commonwealth eliminator. Emmanuel Enim. He entered the championship round. Yeah, in the championship round. Emmanuel Enim now going forward. And you can see the overhead shot. But still, there's no power and accuracy. Enim goes you know, to the rib, you know, to the stomach, trying to connect downstairs. And you can see Mate really felt it. You know, good connection there from Enim. And Mate has no option but to fight back. Enim quickly gets back to the center of the ring. Mate is backpedaling. No, no. What, what, what is wrong with Enim? I, I don't know what well, is was wrong. Was he kicking a ball or... This is boxing. And uh, that this was evening, I witnessed. This is the second bout that we witnessed this. <laughs> Mate trying to find his rhythm, but he's he's been highly inconsistent. Both boxers have been. I guess so. So in him was to you know try to rush on Mate. You know, I think he's been doing that, you know, all night. But the, the issues really has to do with or the issues are with his punches. He's and not all, landing powerful punches. He's not connecting very well as well. He's not working onto the body. So it's it's the same old story. I mean. Good uppercut there from Mate. In him still soldiering on. And he goes out with the uppercut. Mate comes back. And the punches are just not landing. Refusing to land. Mate misses. In him goes forward, but also cannot punish Mate. You know, fatigue is setting in now. Looking at the rate with which he are missing punches. And that's the end. So, well, let's wait and see whether they have something to show us in this penultimate round as well as the final round. That is if there's no knockout even in round 11. Round 11 about to start. Everybody cleared from inside the ring.
and so the two boxers will slag it out. Mate, you know, going for it quickly. You know, he does well when he goes for it, but his um, ability to get those punches landing, you know, that's the problem. I don't know why, what he's keeping them for. Because you advance forward, you're attacking your opponent. And what you are supposed to do is to unleash those punches. That's a, a kidney punch coming from uh, Enim. He needs to avoid those things. You are, that, you, are, you, are, you are actually aggressive now. The momentum has switched uh, to Enim's side and he needs to let it count. He needs to make sure that it counts. He releases the punches. He needs to make sure that he hits the, bo the body, work the body of Imano Mate. Mate seems to be a bit fatigued. And, that's, and this is where Enim has to take advantage. And him still lacking precision. And he misses once again. You know, good job there from Mate, but Enim has replied and it took and sent Mate to the rope. Mate now will try to attack Enim. Also following up. And he's still, <laughs> you don't know what he's trying to do. You know, and he will clinch Mate. Quickly, you know, he was quick there, but same old story. But if you tie your, your opponent, if you tie your opponent up, what you do is that you try to use the free, the free arm to be able to release punch to score point. You don't just tie him up for tying sake and then you are not able to actually release punches. Then what is the significance of you tying him up? So here, it's Enim once again. And that is the problem with Enim. You know, trying to fight his way out. Enim now going in upstairs. You know, with um, some punches. This time round, he goes downstairs before connecting up. I think the judges might favor Enim, you know, because of his aggression. Yeah, from the, from the also number of punches seven round, I, yeah. he, he End really of round, started becoming 11. more aggressive. End of round 11, Jeff. Yeah. Finally, another boxing, you know, bout coming to an end. You know, we've seen a lot, but little That's highlights. Left hook. Yeah, this was in him aggressive yes. as usual, yeah. and also missing a lot of his punches. Yeah. But let's see whether Enim will be able to... He really has done quite well in the last two rounds. So, what what do he have... What does Enim have in stock? Will he finish this thing up? Because you realize that the performance of Marty from the seventh round has not been impressive. So, will, Enim, will Marty surprise us by finishing well? Or will Enim actually be the one who has been performing so well continuing from 12th round from. to end this super middleweight contest national super middleweight contest and also the Kumota eliminator two undefeated boxers but I think today you know one will go home you know with uh, his first professional defeat well at the end of the day if you are undefeated before you meet one person will definitely have Unless they're about any in a draw, either a split draw or majority draw, one boxer has to lose. At all, at, at all points, it will, it will come to that stage where, depending on which opponents you meet, your, your, your record of not losing a bout will come to an end. Unless you have Floyd Mayweather.
<laughs> oh, you're yeah, Joe Kazagi. You know, oh, you're yeah, Rocky Marciano. Yes. Now you have a lot of boxers now, you know, who, who've got uh, unblemished records. Well, your man, um, Kev Terman. Kev Terman has Terman unble is unblemished record. You know, one time. I, you know, I like him so much. Focus, concentrated. No, but I want him to fight Jeff Horn as well. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, everybody's talking about Jeff Horn. Yeah, I mean, for beating Manny Pacquiao, yes, it's, it's a real deal. Irrespective of the age of Manny Pacquiao. You know, there's also talk about um, Errol Spence and Jeff Horn. Well, I you mean, know. <laughs> well, Errol Spence must come up, um, step up one, one week uh, from Super Light. They'll come to the welterweight division and let's see how it goes. You know, that, that, that's what they're talking about. And we hope... You know, to see some of those um, exciting bouts in boxing. A lot yeah, of bouts must happen, right? Big bouts coming up. Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua. And also Dylan White is also fighting, you know, next week. Yes. You know, will, would, would that mean that Woda, you know, can fight, you know, White? And then if um, AJ also wins his bout. Or well, Dental Woda need to need more quality bout before he fight AJ. Trust me. I watched Dental Wilder and I'm not too much impressed. impressed. Just like what we're watching now in the super middleweight context, still not impressed with Mate and Enim. The battle of the two Emmanuels. You know, but I, I think they're the same. You know, nothing really has happened. Well, I think the difference... No differentiate. The difference, difference between the two boxers, elements. they are synonyms. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe but I in agree. terms of... In terms of boxing, you know, very little. Skill technique nah. artistry ring generalship i reserve my you know <laughs> my comments they last really 20 seconds of this eliminator and any you know trying to go downstairs and he connected well with some double combinations see how it ends That's not I'm catching. Hey. punch there you know uppercuts you know from Mate didn't fight land you know so we're waiting So let's see how the judges will score this, you know, fight. Good patrons, you know, nodding their head, and I mean, to the tune 
of the wonderful music yeah. that is being played. You know, I think the fans, you know, they've loved it. They've really loved it. Yeah, not bad, you know, a night at all boxing. Oh, we've, we've enjoyed ourselves with some quality bouts. Yeah, I'm impressed with the way our patrons are enjoying themselves. You know, always a point to come back to the Buku Marina after, you know, what they're seeing here. Maybe this is what could bring the numbers in. You know, now the big names in Ghana boxing, Basti Samir, Bukum Banku, you know, Isaac Dogbe, and also, yes. Imano Tego. Um, names that will draw the crowd. You know, we don't have those World Title hopefuls here, but it's been great. You know, tonight, watching, you know, all of them. It's, it's, it's been, you know, a good night, you know, for boxing. Very good night for boxing. Yeah, we've had certain moments of yeah. excitement. You know, so we're just uh, awaiting with now everything confirmed inside the ring. The tallying has been done. And so we'll just uh, be getting the final verdict uh, from the ring announcer. You know, so let's now get over to, you know, the ring and see what Nathaniel Arto has got for us. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of exciting boxing, we'll do one resounding round of applause for the two boxers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we settle it on the scorecards. Judge JB Owusu Ansa scores the bout 119-112. Maymen Sakakwa scores it 115-115. And Judd Michael Nikwe scores it 115-113 for the winner. And the new national super medal weight champion of Ghana. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, for Emmanuel the Mayweather. Well, interesting, Emmanuel Martin. Wow, this, this, this is really shocking. Le well, <laughs> you, interesting. Unanimous decision. Well, that's interesting. But, you know, for me, I, I have...